in this video we are going to discuss about uh, RLC circuit so this will come under second order circuits so why it will come under second order circuit means it has two storage element in the circuit ok so we call it as second order circuits so second order circuits involves uh, second derivative ok second derivative so we will call it as uh, second order circuits so uh, here first we will discuss about the source free series RLC circuit ok so first of all we will understand the natural response so we already know what is natural response the natural response means the response due to the stored energy we call it as natural response ok so let us consider a series RLC circuit ok uh, uh, let us assume that the circuit was uh, already being excited by some, some source due to that uh, initially there is a charge stored in capacitor as well as inductor so based on the stored energy in the capacitor and inductor uh, there will be a response there will be a response ok the stored initial energy we call it as V of 0 and I of 0 ok V of 0 is a voltage across the capacitor which is stored energy we will represent that as V naught I of 0 is a stored energy in the inductor we will uh, use it as I naught ok so initially we will apply KVL around the loop so while applying the KVL what, I'll, uh, what will I get the current is I let us consider the current is I so R multiplied by I the KVL involves only voltage and the voltage across the resistor will be Ri ok or uh, V equal to I R you can uh, both are same ok R times I plus uh, voltage across the inductor will be represented as L di by dt ok this is the voltage across the inductor L di by dt and voltage across the capacitor will be represented as 1 by C ok minus infinity to 0 I dt equal to 0 so why I mention it as minus infinity to 0 means that it will be uh, the source will be connected only up to the time 0 we are assuming the initial time is 0 ok we can consider it as T also ok initial time can be 0 ok so 1 by C minus infinity to 0 I dt which is the voltage across the capacitor ok these are all the general form uh, formulas will you we already use to find the voltage across the inductor or voltage across the capacitor ok so voltage across the inductor will be represented as L di by dt i is the current flowing through the inductor and then voltage across the capacitor can be written as 1 by c minus infinity to 0 i dt ok so just uh, number the equation as 1 2 1 3 number the equations as 1 2 1 3 ok so i like to eliminate this inductor or oh, sorry integral so this integral to be eliminated for that what I am going to do is I am going to differentiate this with respect to T so if I am differentiating this with respect to T what will I get so this I become di by dt I am representing, uh, differentiating the current with respect to time ok so this will become di by dt so or di by dt so this is what we get so L di by dt already we have a di by dt if I differentiate this uh, with respect to time one more time what will get d square i by d t square ok so this is differentiated one more time we got dl d, I, uh, d square i by d t square and this integration will get cancelled so I will be getting i by c i by c so this will be represented like this if I differentiate this equation with respect to t and rearrange ok the same equation can be written as I am going to divide this equation with l each and every coefficient I am going to divide by L so this L will get cancelled so we will get D square I by DD square plus uh, uh, there is no L here so R divided by L we got DI by DT here also we don't have any L so I by LC equal to 0 so this is considered as equation number 4 this is considered as equation number 4 ok so as I already told this is uh, this will come under second order circuits we have second order differential equation ok so this is the reason we are calling this as second order circuit this is the reason we are calling this as second order circuit ok so if I need to solve the differential equation in second order I suppose to have two initial conditions 
okay the initial value for i and its first derivative and initial value for uh, uh, some i and v the voltage initial values also we need to know okay because across the capacitor will be having initial voltage okay that also we need to know okay so let us uh, consider uh, the initial value in the equation 2 what is in equation 2 i of 0 is i not okay initial current through the inductor and uh, v of 0 we can represent as v not v of 0 can be represented as v not so by considering the equation 1 and uh, equation 3 so i'll be representing as r i of 0 plus l d i of 0 by dt and then this will be represented as v naught this will be represented as v naught okay so from equation 3 i can write so i am going to consider the initial current so r i of 0 and then l instead of i we have i of 0 d i of 0 by dt and instead of that uh, 1 by c integral i dt we are going to write v naught okay that we represent in equation number 1 that we already represented in equation number 1 okay so this can be written as L dI of 0 by dt and I can take this to the right hand side and I can take this also to the right hand side so you get minus V naught minus R I naught ok so dI of 0 by dt can be written as minus 1 by L this L will be taken to the right hand side so it will go to the denominator so within bracket V naught so this minus is taken out so V naught plus R I of 0 this I of 0 can be written as I naught so minus 1 by L we have V naught plus R I naught. So minus 1 by L V naught plus R I naught. Uh, this is the uh, initial condition for the first derivative. Okay, this is the initial condition for the first derivative. This is the formula we will be using while solving problems. So we need to make a note of it separately. So D A of 0 by D T equal to minus 1 by L V of 0 plus R I of 0. So it is important. So make a note of this particular equation. Okay, because this will be used in all the problems. Okay. And now uh, the equation 4, uh, do you remember the equation 4, I will show the equation 4 now. So this is my equation 4, okay this is my equation 4, I am going to take i outside, I am going to take i, I outside, so we got uh, some equation like this. So d square by dt square plus r by l into d by dt plus 1 by lc multiplied by i equal to 0. Now I am going to represent d by dt equal to s. Yes. So all the d by dt will be represented with s. Yes. Uh, this d, d square by dt square can be written as d by dt multiplied by d by dt. So it will be s square. So we got s square. This d by dt can be represented as s. Yes. So r by l into s plus 1 by lc equal to 0. Okay. So this is a quadratic equation. Uh, we call it as uh, characteristic equation of differential equation. Okay. Characteristic equation. Okay, uh, if I solve this equation, I will be getting two roots. Okay, I will be getting two roots. Uh, so, that will be S1 equal to minus R by L, uh, R by 2L. So, actually, uh, it can be written as plus or minus, right? Plus or minus root of R by 2L whole square minus 1 by LC. Okay, this unity changes minus. So, minus R by 2L minus root of R by 2L whole square minus 1 by LC. It is equation number 8. So, these are all the roots of this equation s square plus r by l s plus 1 by l c ok so that can be uh, uh, calculated by using minus 4 minus b plus or minus root of uh, b square minus 4 ac by 2 ok so we got two uh, particular roots s1 equal to minus r by 2 l plus or minus 0 uh, root of r by 2 l whole square minus 1 by l c so i am naming this as uh, equation number 7 and equation number 8 Okay, the more compact way of representing the root is, so I am going to give some name for this. R by 2 will be represented as alpha and then 1 by root LC I am going to represent as omega. Not omega, omega naught. Okay, I am going to represent as omega naught. Okay, uh, so we got uh, S1 equal to minus alpha plus R by 2 can be represented as alpha, alpha square. 1 by LC root LC will be represented as omega naught so 1 by LC can be represented as omega naught square so if I square it then only the root will get cancelled so alpha square minus omega naught square 
and S2 also can be written. Uh, what is the change here? Instead of plus, we will be having minus here. That's all. That is the only change. So remember this alpha and omega naught. This formula is also important. Okay, this S1 and S2 are called natural frequencies. We call this S1 and S2 as what? Natural frequencies, and we will be measuring that in napiers per second. Okay, napiers per second. So now uh, this equation, equation number 6 is represented like this, s square plus 2 alpha s plus omega naught square, okay r by l we have, okay we supposed to have r by 2 l, okay so we are writing s square plus 2 alpha s, okay we, we got uh, 1 by l c, so that will be represented as omega naught square, okay omega naught is 1 by root l c, omega naught square is 1 by l c. Okay, the solution for this equation. So, solution for this differential equation will be like this. I of t equal to a1 e power s1 t plus a2 e power s2 t. Okay, this is also important. Please make a note of this. Okay, the solution of the differential equation is I of t equal to a1 e power s1 t plus a2 e power s2 t. Here, a1 and a2 are constants. Okay, and that will be determined using the initial values. As I already told, I of 0 and dA of 0 by dt are the initial uh, values we are supposed to know in order to find what is A1 and what is A2. Okay, we are supposed to calculate this I of 0 and dA of 0 by dt in order to find the final equation. Okay, in order to find the final equation. So, there are three cases uh, based on the value of alpha and omega naught. If alpha is greater than omega naught, okay, these are the th three cases we will be identifying uh, uh, in our uh, RSU circuit based on the only the formulas will be decided. Okay, for each and every case there are different formulas, so you need to know the formulas for all the three cases. Okay, alpha greater than omega naught will be represented as over damped case. Alpha equal to omega naught we, we call it as critically damped case. Alpha less than omega naught will uh, we'll call it as under damped case. Okay, these are these are the three things. Okay, so in over damped, when the roots of the circuit characteristics are unequal and real, the roots, the roots means uh, S1 and S2. Okay, so they are unequal and real, and critically damped means it will be equal and real. For critically damped, it will be equal and real. Okay, for under damped, the roots will be complex. There are three things, uh, three cases. We have to consider okay while solving the RLC series circuit. Okay, so the first case is over damped case. In that case, alpha should be greater than omega naught. The second case is alpha equal to omega naught, we call it as critically damped, and alpha less than omega naught, we call it as under damped. There, there are three things you may, uh, need to note down here. Okay, so uh, till now, okay, till now I have discussed some cases. Okay, I ask you to note down the three things. Uh, one is what is alpha formula, what is omega naught formula, and what is I of t a1. Uh, so, what is this differential equation, and uh, what is dA of 0 by dt? What is the formula for dA of 0 by dt? These are all things you should know in order to solve the problems. Okay, so this question may be asked directly in the theory part also. Okay, theory part, there is a chance to ask the same question in theory part. Okay, so uh, let us consider the over damped case. Alpha will be greater than omega naught. Okay, this is uh, uh, we can say the C will be greater than 4L by R square. Okay, C will be greater than 4L by R square. Okay, in the case of alpha greater than omega naught. So let us consider the solution here, which is I of t equal to A1 e power S1 t plus A2 e power S2 t. Okay, it is a, it is a over damped response. Okay, finally it is going to decay to zero because it is natural response. There will be no excitation to the source, so definitely it has to come back to zero. Okay, definitely the response has to come back to zero. Okay. So for over damped case, uh, this will be the formula. How do you identify whether it, whether it is over damped or not based on this value? If alpha is greater than omega naught, I can directly decide it is a over damped case and consider this formula for solving the problem. This is I of t equal to a one e power s one t plus a two e power s two t. How do you calculate A1 and A2? A1 and A2 will be calculated by using the initial uh, conditions. 
नेक्स्ट क्रिटिकली डैम्प सो फॉर द क्रिटिकली डैम्प केस आलफा इज इक्वल टू ओमेगा नाट ओके सो इफ आलफा इज इक्वल टू ओमेगा नाट विल गेट सी इक्वल टू फोर एल बाई आर स्क्वायर सो दिस वॉट आई हैव साल्व हियर ओके इफ एनी डाउट्स जस्ट लुक एट दिस यू कैन अंडरस्टैंड डायरेक्टली आई जस्ट सब्सिट्यूटेड वॉट इज आलफा एंड वॉट इज ओमेगा नाट एंड आई जस्ट केम अप विथ सी इक्वल टू फोर एल बाई आर स्क्वायर ओके सो एस वन विल बी इक्वल टू एस टू will be equal to minus alpha okay s1 will be equal to here the roots are equal so s1 equal to s2 equal to minus alpha which is equal to minus r by 2 okay uh, so if i'm considering this i have to equal to a1 e4 minus alpha t plus a2 e4 minus alpha t because your uh, the roots are equal okay here the roots are equal if i consider this So here, what we have here, I have to equal a1 e4 s1 t plus a2 e4 s2 t. In the place of s1, I am writing minus alpha. S2 also I am writing alpha minus alpha. Okay, I am going to get the equation like e4 minus alpha t a1 plus a2. Okay, a1 plus a2 will be considered as one single constant e3, and I cannot consider this as a solution because the initial conditions cannot be satisfied with single constant. Initial conditions cannot be satisfied with a single constant, so. Uh, we are going to go back and uh, solve for this. Let us take equation number four. The equation number four is d square i by dt square, r by l d i by dt plus i i by l c equal to zero. This is the equation number four. Okay, so d square i by dt square plus two alpha d i by dt. Okay, how I written this? We know that r by two l is equal to alpha. Okay, we got r by l, so we are written two l, two alpha. So two alpha d i by d t plus alpha square i. So here omega naught is equal to alpha. Omega naught square will be equal to alpha square. So I am writing alpha square i equal to zero. So this can be written as d square i by d t square plus uh, uh, this two alpha d i by d t is written as alpha d i by d t plus alpha d i by d t plus alpha square i equal to zero. Okay, so from this two, I am going to take this d by dt outside. We will get dI by dt plus alpha i. Okay, plus alpha dI by dt plus alpha square. Sorry, alpha is taken out here. So d alpha multiplied by dI by dt plus alpha i equal to zero. So I am going to consider this dI by dt plus alpha i as e f. Okay, so the equation 15 can be written as d f by dt plus alpha i f. Okay. So just write down the equation number for all uh, because we'll be uh, referring it in the future. Okay, so uh, d f by d t plus alpha f equal to zero. This is what we got. And the solution for this is f equal to a one e power minus alpha t. Okay, solution for this differential equation is f equal to a one e power minus alpha t. Okay, so here uh, a one is constant. So the equation 16 can be written as d i by d t plus alpha i. Okay, equation 16. Okay, this f will be replaced with what? The, the solution a1 e power minus alpha t. Okay. So this e power minus alpha t is taken to other side. Okay, it will go to the denominator like a 1 by e power minus alpha t. If I take it to the numerator, I can write e power alpha t. Okay, I am going taking it to the numerator e power alpha t d i by d t plus e power alpha t alpha i so we'll come to the denominator as it is okay so 1 by e power minus alpha t can be written as e power okay so that is what i have done here equal to a1 so next uh, i am differentiating e power alpha t multiplied by i with respect to t Okay, so here two things uh, which can be differentiated. So e power r. So we are using u v formula. We know that u v equal to u d v plus v d u. Okay, so d by d t of uh, e power alpha t i equal to e power alpha t d i by d t. First time uh, differentiating i, and then I am differentiating e power alpha t. E power alpha t if I differentiate it, I get alpha e power alpha t. Okay, multiplied by the value i. Okay, so this is what we'll get if I uh, differentiate this so e power alpha t i with respect to t. Okay. 
so this equation is similar to this okay this equation is similar to this so what i can do instead of writing this i can write d by dt of e power alpha d in type okay so we are writing this directly this left hand side is directly written which is equal to a1 okay which is considered as e equation number 19 okay now i'm going to integrate both sides if i'm integrating both sides this differentiation will get cancelled so we'll get e power alpha t i equal to if i integrate this i'll get a1 integration of constant uh, leads to t okay so a a1 t plus the constant a <laughs> okay i equal to a1 t plus a2 e power minus alpha t So this can be written as i of t equal to a2 plus a1 t e power minus alpha t. For the critically damped case, I suppose to use this formula in the natural response of RLC circuit. Okay, the last case is under damped case. So in the case of under damped case, alpha will be less than omega naught, c is less than 4L by R square, the roots may be written as s1 equal to minus alpha plus root of uh, so here omega naught is greater than alpha so i am just rearranging it so if i take the negative sign outside it will be minus multiplied by omega naught square minus alpha square i can write like this okay so this root of minus one can be represented as j and then omega naught square root of omega naught square minus uh, alpha square will be represented as omega d Okay, which is damping frequency. I am going to consider the damping frequency omega d here, which is equal to what? The root of omega naught square minus alpha square. Okay, so these two, two equations become like this: minus alpha minus j omega d, minus alpha plus j omega d. Okay, j is equal to root minus i, and uh, omega d equal to root of omega naught square minus alpha square. Okay. So if I substitute uh, this s1 and s2. In the general differential equation, what I get? A1 e power minus alpha minus j omega d into t plus A2 e power minus alpha plus j omega d into t. For every case, we are considering the first equation. A1 e power uh, S1 t plus A2 e power S2 t. Okay, I am substituting S1 and S2 here. Okay, so I can take e power minus alpha outside, alpha t outside. So I get A1 e power j omega d t. This minus and this minus will be. Uh, multiplied, I'll get plus. So j omega dt plus a2 e power minus j omega dt. This is what we get. Okay. So by Euler's identity, I can write e power j theta is written as cos theta plus j sin theta. e power minus j theta is written as cos theta minus j sin theta. Okay. Just substitute the values here. So i of t e power minus alpha t multiplied by a1 into cos omega dt plus j sin omega dt. Okay. For this. Next, a2 into uh, e power minus j omega dt can be written as cos omega dt minus j sin omega dt. Minus j sin omega dt. Okay. Here a1 cos omega dt plus a2 cos omega dt is there. So I can take cos omega dt outside. You get a1 plus a2 cos omega dt. And here uh, j sin omega dt minus j sin omega dt is there. Okay. So uh, I can take uh, plus j outside, we'll get a1 minus a2 into sin omega dt, minus sin omega dt. A, a1 plus a2 can be considered as one more constant b1, and a1 minus a2 will be considered as b2. Okay, so the equation will be like this. I have not written here, just make a note. i of t equal to e power minus alpha d b1 cos omega dt plus j b 2 sin omega d t ok so this is what the equation will use for over damped case ok this is the equation we have to use for over damped case and this is the equivalent sorry not over damped under damped for under damped case and this is a waveform for the under damped case ok thank you